just for that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I'm like, that's bullshit. Nobody wears yeah. silk you boxers. Can't that shit. You, you know? just gotta find one that doesn't have a hole in it. Yeah. You know, that doesn't show your penis on accident. That's a rental. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, know? you know what? You know what? A good place to get underwear. Goodwill. I actually. When I did it, I I had also done um, this uh, cultural night, and as a result, uh, you wear a uh, loincloth almost, and then you had to wear a thong underneath it. So when I went out on the on the uh, undie run, I had put a thong underneath just in case the goods got out. I got a thong underneath. You still got that's that's cl- that's uh, that's thinking yeah. ahead for sure. Just in case, oh, you know something rips. Like, thank I'm God I wore that thong. <laughs> <laughs> the only time I will have said that in my life. <laughs> Ooh. Uh, so, have you guys uh, stocked up on food? I've been thinking about stocking up on pasta. Like, that's the thing. And then, like, at my job... Um, well, this is for the coronavirus. Yeah, right? yeah. Or ju- okay, yeah. I just thought so, it was, like, in general. Oh, no. no. Just, I, don't, I, love, I don't need to gain... I, I don't need to weight gain. I was like, it know? looks like I've stocked up on <laughs> enough food. <laughs> no, at my job, um, they, uh, we went all... Uh, oh, you, you know, everyone's got to have hand sanitizers now. And I went to went on Staples online to buy hand sanitizer. They had run out of hand sanitizer. Sold out? Yeah, at least the first one I looked. And I'm like, okay, I'll get the second one that's smaller, hand sanitizer, can smaller size. That way, you know. So, but I was like, well, and after that, it's probably gonna that one's gonna probably run out. So, you know, <laughs> we're all just gonna have dirty hands at work. I oh. hate hand sanitizer. I can't. I can't I, stand it. I it smells it so bad. I I hate hand sanitizer. When you go and you go and you squirt it in your hand and you go, <gasps> ah! and you realize that you've been eating your nails all day and you have a bad habit. Oh, and those hangnails? Yeah, oh, fuck. Yeah. No, nah, I don't even care about that. It is the smell is so strong. Yeah. It's like, hey, you like lotion and vodka? Fuck yeah. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of Double XP. I'm your host, Logan Miles. I'm joined again by my co-host, Danny Flores. And today we're joined by a really funny local LA comedian, Jay Aquino. Hey, Jay. how's it going, everybody? <laughs> sure. How's, uh, so how's it hanging, Jay? Uh, it's good. You know, I went to a mic today, did some comedy, you know. I, I was writing a new joke and it didn't land, and so I just went to my the set I've been working on. I've been working on having a f- solid five minutes, mm-hmm. and then I I did the, I did the, what was it on the solid five minutes in front of three people. So it, it's been a good day. Where was the set, Lexington? Was it the a solid three people? Uh, solid. One of them was super solid, it's super. But anyways, it's at uh, the <laughs> Hollywood Comedy. Check it out if you know you like comedy. Wait, what? My, what? What? My five eight seven one Melrose Avenue. I was giving free plug. Yeah, I, I felt that <laughs> right up front. So Danny, what's new with you, man? How you doing? I'm all right, you man. Still, still haven't played League of Legends. Hell yeah, yeah. Did you hide been going strong for a full week. Full week. What? It, I'm not playing. What have you played in? I had major withdrawals on on Wednesday. Oh my god! On Wednesday, I was like, I could just play one. I could just, <laughs> just one before bed. <laughs> just maybe I could do it. I don't know. Then I just Who jacked off that? and went to sleep yeah. instead. Yeah. yeah. Just let all the rage out. That's still a pretty good night. Unleashed. Yeah. How about you, Logan? Um, I uh I, I went to Costco. I went to Costco and I bought a fifty pound bag of rice and then I bought some a bunch of pasta, um, spaghetti, angel hair and some stuff, and then like the whole time my girlfriend was like, really? Like we have to do this? And I'm like, oh, you know, as we're like picking out stuff. I get a push notification on my phone from Twitter saying CDC advises there may be disruption to American society or society or whatever that announcement was like a week ago. Uh-huh. And why were we doing it? And I just wanted to just hold it over my head and be like, I'm right. You know, <laughs> I wanted to be able to hold it over and say, see, you know, but um, other than that, like uh, it was nice. It was, you know, uh, we got our stuff. We're bunkered down. Uh, I got game pass. I'm ready to go. I'm ready for the lockdown. You know, 
Dang, is there anything anything new you've seen on Game Pass? The uh, I'm pretty sure Control's on there. I just haven't. Uh, Control is like the game of the year for a lot of people, and I just been so busy that I I just finished. I free. I, I keep forgetting if I always mention this on every podcast, but I just finally finished the main quest of The Witcher Three. Oh, you were telling me about the other day. Yeah, yeah. it was ninety five hours. Yeah, ninety five hours. Dang. So I have both expansions now to get through, and I've heard that both expansions are both expansive individually longer than the main quest of the original game. So I have got my material ready. You know, I'm ready to just, I don't know. We, we watched contagion last week. Uh, remember that movie Mm -hmm. with, uh, Matt Damon, all that, all the, it it was like the movie rat race, but for viruses, because there was like so (laughs) many celebrities like what this, who the hell, you know, was the casting director of this. Um, and you know it was a, it was a cool movie, very 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 relevant, you know. And then like halfway throughout the movie, when Matt Damon looks out through his window and he sees his neighbors getting gunned down as they get robbed, me and my girlfriend look at each other like, maybe we could like get barbed wire for the balcony or something like that. Are we know? actually preparing for a uh, what's that movie? The Twenty Eight Days Later? No no no. What's the World War Z? No, th- it's like a, the big uh, uh, Kindergarten the Cop. Lebowski. Uh, this is gonna be bad. The, but like the one where everyone murders each other. Uh, with oh, um, the purge. Purge. Are we purging soon? Lion King. We I might. Think it seems we might. like it. Like people are getting ready. They're bunkering down. We're gonna be all like, you know, oh, everyone's gotta go into their their uh, their apartments and houses or whatever, and you gotta, you know, the government's gonna be like, hey, good luck, everybody. They're not even doing that. They're not even saying good luck. They're just like, well, like a few mm. people will say good luck, you know. There's a good mutual fund you could put money in over. Uh, no, no, thanks, man. Um, I didn't remember the purge. That's not a. <laughs> I'm very. I saw like purge election day. I think it was the only one I saw. It's all right. They were all not. Yeah. That great. I mean, the pr- any movie, any movie that they make that they're like, well, let's make four of these. It's like, how good can it be? You know. I mean, <laughs> don't get me wrong. E- Fast and the Furious were great. The first time the Fast and the Furious came out. Then Too Fast, Too Furious, a little weird. Tokyo Drift, a little weird. And then, you know, it just, okay, this is one level above Asylum fo- uh, Pictures. Have you guys seen the the Rick and Morty episode, uh, the Purge of Rick and Morty episode? Nah. No. No, it's, it's, it's actually better than the actual Purge movies. Because it's like you have a character you care about being in that situation where they have to kill or not kill. And then, you know. Plus it's hilarious. The, and, and it's hilarious. And, you know, you can do whatever you want in the cartoon. Unless what a per- budget permitting, <laughs> I'm I'm still resisting because I know I know the subject matter that Rick, Rick and Morty is, and I know for a fact that I would love it. I think it, it, it's a cool idea. Yeah, I'm surprised um, you haven't seen it actually. It, it's yeah. because a couple like I had one friend go, "Oh, you would love it. You should really watch it." Yeah, and then I just was like, "Ah, I'll, I'll get to it," and I just built up a little bit of resistance slash rebellion. And now I've had dozens of people saying, oh, you would love it. It's great. It's great. And everyone, and I know it's great. I know it's a great show. Dan Harmon's a great writer. I just, I, I Hey, Logan, priorities. you shouldn't watch it. Well, fuck you. I'm going to watch it tomorrow. <laughs> Jesus. This guy, I think he is. <laughs> anyway. Um, anyway, what's uh, going on in the news uh, this week? Um, besides, uh, GDC has been postponed because of coronavirus. It's no, no joke. Like coronavirus might actually impact the development of a substantial number of games. Um, you know, like we 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 think that oh, everyone's just going to be remote and stuff, but we forget that a lot of um digital artists work and a lot of video games require that interaction between people and stuff so if there is a big quarantine or stuff like that we might not get cyberpunk until december you know oh, so shoot. i so it's like yeah we got to get past this so that's why i'm like we got to find the anim- give me coronavirus let's get yeah. it past us and you know i think it's uh, uh they say it's estimated at 18 months at least until a pe- vaccine that's like best case scenario damn so yeah yeah, damn. You gotta whatever game you have right now that you really like, just keep playing it. You know. Well, you got two expansions of Witcher Three uh, to dude, go through. I'm ready so to that's go. Good. You got anything you're playing right now that uh, you, know, you I can hold on to? I r- periodically replay Fire Emblem Three Houses. I have beaten it on every house. There's three different houses. 
I've been uh, wait. What's, what's the houses thing? Like, the, uh, like black families? eagles, blue lions, and uh, golden deer. It's like a uh, Harry Potter, like you know, okay. like you have like a sorting hat type of thing, you know. And they're they're all students, and then like uh, a bit highlight spoiler. So it, like part of the thing is that these three houses are like three different um, factions of of like nations, okay. and so um, the first half of the game, they're all just students, and they're all just like trying to find out, you know, some mysteries, or trying to just kill some bandits and stuff like that. Second half of the game, all three of the other uh, factions go to war. So you end up going to war with the people that you were students with that you didn't recruit. Oh, and some of them you can't recruit. So wow. That is an emotional roller coaster. It, it, it is, and also it's like, um, it was interesting because the game came out um, uh, right after the Game of Thrones ended, right? And then the game has... Oh, a so wo- it's a new game. Yeah, right, pretty uh, new. Yeah, pretty new. It came out last year. And um, it has a white-haired female protagonist that can be considered an anti-hero slash villain, you know, that sort of does this whole, sort of whole Daenerys thing. And, like, like I don't know why I haven't read a video game article about this because it's so – it's a big game. It got, like, a bunch of awards. It got, like, you know, tactile game of the year at the best game, game awards or whatever. And It came out for Switch? Game out for Switch. Fire Emblem is a long-running series. It's probably the biggest game in the series. And – um. It's like there's so much connective tissue. I like I wanted to go on Reddit and just write this long, you know. I never do these long articles, but mm-hmm. this long article arguing, okay, you know, Fire Emblem because you there's three different paths. You see three different perspectives on this one character. One where she's the protagonist per se, and then one where she is uh, a villain, and then one where she is a villain, but the the protagonist understands her motives. You know, and so it's like three different paths, and it's like a really interesting way so because like fire Emblem usually has like more or less like evil lord evil dragon I and mean, there's there is an evil you gotta have the game. evil dragon evil yeah. dragon yeah. in this it's game it's not a game like skyrim but, without a dragon or but in this game it's like because of that interplay like sometimes i'll just not recruit ca- characters on a path that way this is gonna sound bad so i can kill them with other characters that are they're friends with you know so like there's this one. It's uh, not what I was expecting. I was like, oh, so, a, so I can Logan fuck them, you, you know, do. you know, when no. they're sleeping. I'm like, no, no, I was no, no, no. This is a Nintendo game. There's no, there's no type of things like that. Oh yeah, I forgot. The, the, the killing, <laughs> the killing your friends. I don't want to interrupt you, but speaking of Nintendo, you mentioned that Nintendo doesn't do like like any violence or anything. Did you know? You you actually you would know this. Uh, when um, uh, Donkey Kong 64 came out, there was a, a, a move where you could get a cannon and shoot a cannon. Mm-hmm. And Shinjiro Miyamoto was horrified yeah. that, by that because of the, he didn't like violence uh, at all. I think uh, Shinjiro Miyamoto has like a big play. Like he, They're working on a, an, uh, Imagine Studios or whatever the company that does the Minions movies. They're mm-hmm. working on a Mario movie, right? And then well, it's executive produced by Shigeru Miyamoto. Like a real one. Because like, he has to like give you approval. Yeah. like. I think uh, they've tried to have Mario in um, Wreck It Ralph, and he's like, "No, you guys did it wrong." You know, mm. he's got you know. There's a ways to do it, and also, but they're also expanding the Mario IP. It's good, like they're like uh, farming it out for different games. Like they had it for the Rab- Rabbit series to make a strategy or uh, strategy uh, game on the Switch as well, Mario okay. and Rabbit. So there, Nintendo used to be like, "Hey, don't touch our property," mm-hmm. uh, and then now they're like, "Hey, you know, if you got a good idea, you can uh, you can do it or whatever." So. Well, I think I think the thing that did that was when Nintendo licensed Pokemon to Niantic to do Pokemon mm-hmm. Go, because I remember right when that game took off, it was huge, and I was like, oh, I'm gonna put tons of money and I'm, I'm gonna buy Nintendo stock, right? So I was on Fidelity and I searched Nintendo, no listing on Nasdaq or anything. it's on the Japanese trade, so you had to pay like ten dollars to even buy that trade, and it was NTDOY. Or NTDOW. I forget the actual stock ticker name, but I remember I put like 500 bucks into it, and like it, it went up like 15 percent. And then I read an article saying uh, it was basically saying how so many stupid investors put money in on Nintendo <laughs> after <laughs> that game, but <laughs> Nintendo it, wasn't getting it was any. The wrong one. It was no Niantic was getting all that, and they weren't even on the summer. <laughs> so I was like, I still made like maybe like and twenty article, bucks off of it. Happy to mention a Logan Miles. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, there was no, it was me and like no, speaking of here's there the stock market is filled with stupid people. For example, coronavirus is hitting. Uh, I've shuffled around my portfolio and stuff like that. What the fuck am I saying? That sounds so stupid. I basically sold some stocks so I don't lose money out. And I had uh, I had a little bit of money, and I was like, oh, I got I to gotta put something <laughs> in that's safe. And I read an article saying, here's the things that's going to be good for the coronavirus. Uh, remote work, you know, like, like um, 
Skype, like cer- certain companies like Zoom, Zoom yeah. or Blue Jeans or stuff like that. So I bought some stock uh, on Zoom, uh, which is ZM stock ticker. I typed Zoom and there is a stock ticker for Z O O M. And I, I almost bought it, but then I, I remembered this article that suggested it, saying the price was different. So I, I was like, whew, I didn't buy that. So then I bought the proper ZM stock. A friend of mine shared me an article saying, this company is bankrupt, but for some reason it's up 25%. Z-O-O-M is an <laughs> equity firm from Ohio. <laughs> I was like, ah, I learned. I learned. So, yeah, that's my stock market story. <laughs> And Hit me up for those tips. Because okay, so going back to Fire Emblem, yeah, uh-huh. so we've gone a long yeah. way from Fire Emblem. So I remember the first one that I remember was for GBA. Yes, Fire right? Emblem Seven. And there was also one that came out for the GameCube. Right? Fire Emblem with pa- Path of Radiance. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, wait, so you said that was Seven? Yeah, so Fire Emblem, Fire Emblem 7 is the one in the Game Boy Advance, but it was named Fire Emblem in the North American and European markets. Oh, got it. So, like, in, in Japan, this game has been going on for a yeah, long so time. Yeah, so what happened was um, originally the game was a Japan only, and then the, but it's really popular in Japan. So um, in the Super Smash Brothers series, they included Marth and the game uh, another protagonist named Roy, but Marth is... Uh, the first protagonist in the series, and the, everyone loved playing them in Smash Brothers. Like, oh, because well, they were fucking I've, broken. I've yeah. always wondered who the fuck are these guys? Yeah, yeah, you so know, and they were good, and that's fire. Yeah, and up. so then um, all of a sudden, <laughs> you know, like uh, especially with some other things that happened, like Advance Wars had done really well here, as opposed to actually in Japan where it had mm. fallen as a series. Dude, Advance Wars was so fun. Yeah, I, that was one I did play. Yeah, yeah. We can so get and then that. eventually they uh, they were like, okay, well let's try to make a Fire Emblem game, but like the thing is. Japan has no faith in North American gamers with good reason because they e- made the game really easy compared to the Japanese standards. And then, like, you know, they're, like, it's been, like, sometimes when it comes over, like, their their hard mode is our super hard mode, our lunatic mode, as they call it. And then our normal is their easy. <laughs> and then they're, they're, you know, that's everything where it's, like, they switch it around. But anyways, yeah. they made the Fire Emblem 7 specifically for North American market. They even had a prologue chapter where they taught you all the rules. With uh with Lynn uh the green haired lady, he cl- occasionally appears in Smash Brothers games now. Damn. So. so they were just like, all right, six of these have done pretty well. I think they're ready. And which is <laughs> crazy because like Roy Roy is appears in um uh Smash Brothers Melee, and then he he's a Fire Emblem Six character. They never released Fire Emblem Six in uh, America because the the game is too hard. Hey, you don't want they will. They're like, okay, we'll just start from scratch. So the Fire Emblem Seven actually is a prequel to Fire Emblem Six. Oh, okay. Yeah. So. Oh, cool, cool, cool. Because they didn't want to disrupt what was going on in Japan. I think it's, they they just want a clean clean break, and then uh, now they they've had a mostly North American strategy. Um, there's a one other game, uh, Fire Emblem New New Mystery to Emblem or something like that. Uh, Heroes of Shadow or something like that, that it was Japan only because it, uh, the one for the DS did really bad. And then that was Japan only. And then it's really blown up again as a series as Fire Emblem Awakening uh, for the 3DS. Yeah, it's I heard about a, that one. That was a big yeah. one. And then now it's like a major IP for Nintendo. It gets it, like Fire Emblem Heroes for uh, mobile actually makes more money than any of their other mobile games. Do you think the success of games like that also has to deal with the fact that they got good-looking characters and people wanted to cosplay as them? I mean, the the whole, you know, um, subculture of identifying as, you know, with the characters with them, like, it's a huge part of the Fire Emblem series, yeah. especially because a lot of, now they have uh, Avatar characters in it, and previously they didn't f- for the, until Awakening, oh, and in the Japan-only game they also had uh, Avatar, and so you could actually marry a character that, you know, I, you know this character is like, you know, like uh, kind of like in Harvest Moon or something like that, where you marry the character, and then, like, um, that's the character that you know. You after you could actually kind of there's in Fire Emblem there's these things called support conversations, and then so you get to know the characters' personalities as you fight in battle. So like when they fight next to each other, they gain uh like uh camaraderie. Yeah, but, uh, it's like it's they got a horny meter. Their version of dating. It's like <laughs> they oh, got a my horny god. meter. There's no sex, but there's marriage and stuff. My god, dude, that's like that's like in like uh movies, you know, when they're like they hate each other. Like you suck. No, mm-hmm. you suck. Hey, nice. Nice shot on that guy's head, and they're like, "Yeah, that was a nice shot." <laughs> this and is they start forty. Yeah, <laughs> 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 no, because like they, uh, so in the, in the most recent one, it's probably the best support conversation, the best like story they yeah. had in the series, and you still like, um, you still, you still have the thing where, even the eight conversations are where characters quote unquote marry sometimes. 
and like even so then, not not everyone's a match. Yeah, no, or, some, or is sometimes it so it's that like you could you could have a conversation, a, a support with your best friend. It, that's a sometimes thing, but sometimes it's a uh, conversation. So you can get friend zoned. Are yeah, there yeah. any like poly? Saying? Like, can wow. you have like three ways buffs where like if you guys? Well, you can have as many supports a lot of times as possible as long as it's not S support. That's, that's not even one. an expansion. Yeah. Can you have like an eyes wide shut army of people? Everyone can be. Everyone <laughs> can be in the, this game. Like everyone t- into the professor, and they because it's an avatar. Everyone calls them the professor or teacher, or whatever. Or daddy. Yeah. Not. <laughs> not yet. <laughs> we might, I want to play this game. If I if I unlock it, I can do it. No. Um. So everyone like everyone like talks about how much you know. And this character is for some reason like really mute. Like they don't like speak a lot in terms uh-huh. of. Like, it's kind of like you know generally RPGs, uh, Japanese RPGs especially. It's like you have a silent protagonist type of thing. You know, a lot of their responses, oh, yeah. you know, th- this character does talk, but a lot of the responses are y- your responses. <laughs> so it looks like, you know, everyone's falling in love with you because, like, uh, in the part of the narrative of the story is that the protagonist in the game can influence the main three leaders, and that's why they don't go astray. Mm-hmm. You know, the female uh, white-haired uh, protagonist, uh, her name is Edel- Edelgard, uh, because she is has the support and maybe the marriage uh, – uh, the romantic uh, quality of the professor, she becomes uh, able to, you know, not go go full Daenerys. You know what I mean? Type of thing. Sorry, I just got a drink yeah. in my no, eye. No, that's fine. I just, just got drink in my eye. I don't know how that happened. <laughs> <laughs> I took a sip and it just popped up. I was thinking about that white-haired <laughs> Edelgard. Oof. Yeah, so, uh, yeah. But anyways, I, I, I could crazy. go on and on about. No, that's you know. that's nuts. Yeah, so but it's like it's a it's a really great uh, game. It's like especially since the Switch was kind of like everyone slept on the Wii U. So like a lot of the series they're trying to like reintroduce, you know, Nintendo. Like oh, this is like Nintendo now. We're trying to do it. Like Odyssey oh. is like a you know it's like Mario sixty four again, and like Breath of the Wild is a completely different uh, animal than the original Zeldas. Mm-hmm. Even the three D Zeldas, it's like. It's complete open world, and it's like on another level compared to other open world games in terms of, like. Speaking about Zelda, I kind of want to segue into that. Did you play the remake of Link's Awakening? On the I Switch? have not played it yet, but okay. I, 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 I did play the original. You know, it's a good yeah. game. Yeah, I remember playing that one. I haven't. I mean, the new one is just kind of like, uh, it's like, it's the same style. They they haven't kind of put in the mm-hmm. three. I mean, it's still kind of it's three D, but it's still the same action and stuff. And I wasn't sure of like. Like some remakes, especially with um, like the uh, Resident Evil Two and then Resident Evil Three now coming out, Capcom, those were really really good remakes. Um, I was curious of what it was, but mm. um, oh, yeah, I haven't, I haven't had a chance yeah. to play it. But uh, um, the Switch, though, I mean, like as I, I think we mentioned before the podcast, I was like, and the Wii, and then the Wii U, I was like, oh, that's kind of cool. You got a screen, but I'm still like. There wasn't any. I mean, the only game for the Wii U was what Twilight Princess that really interests me. Maybe Pic- Pikmin Two. Mm-hmm. Oh, Those Pikmin. are the only. Remember that? That yeah. was a. That's. I miss that game. Mm-hmm. That's. Um, and. Um, I'm trying to think if there was another game for. Wii well, Breath of the Wild was supposed to be the killer app for the Wii U, and then it got delayed so much it became the killer yeah, app for the, the Switch. Switch. It was a I, launch title. I I don't have a Switch, and I I mean I have a. La- I'm a huge PC gamer. When I do stuff like if I'm traveling, I play. On my phone with like a, a controller, like mm-hmm. I pop my phone in a, on a thing with a controller. Yeah. So I I'm not in the market for a switch, but I definitely say that the switch f- from afar looks like the best console that Nintendo has probably made. Mm-hmm. Because it, okay, relax. No, 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 no. When I say best, I don't mean like like N64, Super Nintendo. Those are all like you know those are nostalgic. Game when Boy I say Color. Best, I mean Game Boy Color was awesome, but I think as a co- as a company. Nintendo has always tried to take the different road. When you look at Xbox and PlayStation 2, those are, like, even now, the new one, the new Xbox, uh, new PS5, um, or is that Xbox Scarlet? I mean, they have thrown out so many different names, you don't know. It could be a code name. here's the thing. I know exactly what it's going to be like. Denver omelet. It's going to be just (laughs) like a PS4, but just with a little bit more You can see the sweat glands, and then when the splashing of a drink comes on, it... (laughs) Goes crazy. So that's uh, that's 4D. all you know, and and they're thinking it's gonna be like five hundred bucks, and so it, it's the same sort of thing. And I th- I love how at least with the Wii U, I love how Nintendo was like, this this is not gonna last for a couple more generations. This pl- I'm, okay, I'm not masturbating. I'm playing with a con- imaginary controller. I am. Although that is how that, it looks that, when he masturbates. Yeah, it is. But but like like this sort of gameplay doesn't. 
like at least with the Wii U, where I was like, I can understand the motion, especially now having a, uh, a Galaxy, not a ga- um, uh, Oculus Quest. Um, like, uh, yeah, I'm all in on the VR, but I think the Switch is just the perfect. Like, like I, I remember everyone freaking out because they're like, it's not powerful. Like the GameCube, like the GameCube is not as powerful as the PS2. All oh, the Wii U is not as powerful. Because you don't. You know, here's the thing: when you get a super powerful. Uh, game console, all you're doing is alienating the poorest of the gamers. Mm-hmm. If your game console is five, six hundred bucks, no one's going to buy it. But if your game console is one ninety nine, that's a much easier. It's a great price point. Yeah. Price point. Point. Yeah, cr- price yeah that price was point. the thing. Like, wasn't Xbox and PS two always like two hundred bucks, and Game was a hundred? It was literally nine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They had a yeah. whole nine ninety nine thing, yeah. and they even include a game sometimes. Yeah, you get Mario Kart or Super Smash Bros. or whatever. Y- it GameCube had so many pretty good games. Um, one game that I really wanted to be good, but it was just so difficult to get all your friends to play, was uh, Crystal Chronicles. Oh yeah, mm. yeah. If you don't have any friends, yeah. they they're doing a, they have a re- re-release of that coming. Final out. Fantasy Crystal Chronicles. Yeah, in case so. you guys don't know. Yeah, that was. You needed to have a Game Boy Advance plugged in to the uh, to the GameCube and friends. <laughs> I friends. love that niche sort of weird ass hardware or like a game where it's like you like 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 semen on not semen like seaman on yeah. on Dreamcast. Yeah. yeah, you had to use a mic. So you have cool. to plug in all these things. That was w- there was no other game that utilized that, but it yeah. was cool for that one use case. And there are other games that are kind of like the Chris Chronicle. And I think GameCube. There were a number of games. Where like I think Pokemon games like the Pokemon Yellow or was it Silver and Gold where you could do stuff with uh like Pikachu Snap or something on the Pikachu GameCube. Pikachu Pokemon Snap is Pokemon what it was called. Snap. Yeah, I thought there was some sort of integration. They always with that. have stuff like but that. Any, but yeah. th- but that that when you look at back at that, that is is that same kind of logic that's working in their mm-hmm. head to build that is in the Switch. You know, so you know what's something crazy about Pokemon Go? Pokemon Go. Is uh, is a Pokemon game. It does make them money. Pokemon Go is actually a strategy for p- get them to get people to exercise. They've been talking about different ways to get people to exercise. They have the Wii Fit series and, and like different, you know, the, the part of the um, the Wii's appeal was that you can is for like um, all timer people and trying to recover and things like that. So they were like, let's make a game that makes people walk. So they actually go outside. Yeah, yeah. So they made a Pokemon game that makes people walk, and they're like, oh yeah, and also it's a Pokemon game, but it also. You know, they they have all these crazy. See, I what I did is I created a spoof GPS uh, beacon on a virtual Android um, instance running, and then I just had it go down. And it was automatically like walking for me, oh. so I didn't have to leave my house. But, so, but everyone else. But for people who weren't lazy pieces of shit, I mean, it was good. You yeah. Know, did so. you, see, but, you see those news articles when like uh, people were like looking down at their phones, so they just get like hit by cars and stuff? I bet they yeah, were. People are still getting hit by cars. Yeah, they like get hit. their phones. Yeah. <laughs> Some of us may, might not make it home. They, on, about Pokemon it's hard stuff. being a Pokemon trainer. That's all I'm saying. Um, anyway, you guys want to talk about the news? Sure. Uh, wait, wait, didn't we just talk about the news? There's no, more news? No, there's the more video news. Video game news. Oh, video yeah. game news. Oh. Yeah, specifically video game news, not, not political news. Oh, I was like, we were talking um, about the news. Yeah, so, uh, have you guys heard about this? Um, no. Hold on a second. I'm going to say no. So uh, if it's not on a Nintendo console, yo, have you guys know. heard about this Mario Kart Tour? So this is a uh, an application on uh, Android. It's going to be for Androids and iPhones. I already have it already. Uh, what? No, that's been out for like December. But it's but it's not been multiplayer. It's only been. Oh yeah, I have. I stopped playing it on March. Eighth is when they finally kick off the multiplayer. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go download. So, download so like right for now. example, I don't know if you've seen Call of Duty Mobile. Call of Duty Mobile, you can play Call of Duty with. Dude, my iPhone. coworker just showed me that. It's, I was blown away. It's very. She good. She popped it out. She was like, "Yeah," and she like got a triple kill. Is, like, it's uh, she just good. blew my mind. I was like, "This looks so good." So, so from what I gather, that sort of like it's kind of amazing how the games that we grew up can be easily ported to Android, and the, it looks like the same with Mario Kart. What about, like, just wait until they almost put so many of our favorite games on mobile. What would be an amazing game that's multiplayer that you would just fucking love to see on mobile in this sort of format? Is there any ones that come to mind, or is that too off-left-field type Well, of they're already making, like, a, a League of Legends mobile, and they have, like, games that are like yeah. that already. Oh. And then they already have, like, World of Warcraft ripoffs. Mm. I, I think um, 
So final, for, for, I'm a big fan of Fire Emblem Heroes, and I think there's a big market for if you just made like a sort of like tactical RPG of Final Fantasy, mm-hmm. like Final Fantasy Tactics, or you you can just make it Final Fantasy something. Like uh, they tried to do this like uh, garbage game called Final Fantasy All the Bravest or something like that, but it was not a good game. But basically, the people behind Fire Emblem Heroes, uh, more Fire Emblem talk, everybody. Uh, so it's like you get you get to recruit all all your favorite characters that have it in the past, and it's a gat. A gacha game or whatever, a gaucho game or whatever. It's just a, it's a subgenre of uh, mobile gaming. Fire, uh, Final Fantasy has way bigger characters than mm-hmm. Fire Emblem. So why hasn't Square Enix released a game like that? And then you can have like you know uh, different types of multiplayer, or even not even multiplayer, but like uh, uh, you uh, different. You know, it's just yeah. like how come there isn't like a Final Fantasy. Ki- like, uh, like a single out. player game. Yeah, just like, on, like on the phone. What I'm, what I'm, it's basically what, what I'm trying to say. Kingdom Hearts version. Oh, yeah, Kingdom Hearts version. W- what I'm just trying to say is that when you look at, like, say, the Switch and how successful the Switch is, the processing power of the Switch actually isn't that far above all of our phones. Mm-hmm. Like, our Android, the, 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 the progress that has been made in mobile CPUs and mo- mobile GPUs and stuff, I mean, any game from. Xbox to PS2 to even Dreamcast are all well within the emulation range of an Android phone. Mm-hmm. So any game from that generation past that you enjoyed could easily be ported in a multiplayer game and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. I just like so I'm just thinking it's like like that's why I'm, I'm like uh, Smash Brothers. Yeah. Smash oh, Brothers. oh it, dude, if sm- dude if Smash Brothers came out and you could just join up a matchmaker like so this game. The rules are going to rotate the daily, and the featured cup changes every fifteen minutes. You know what? Actually, yeah, every fifteen have minutes, to, they have to be having a ma- uh, Super Smash Brothers, and uh-huh. it's inevitable. Like if well, if this takes off, I mean, but but then again, they're like, well, what's the point of buying the console then if uh-huh. if we're just going to put all of our Smash Brothers on Android? I, I, I from what I understand, the Nintendo philosophy is actually it's like. We advertise. It's almost like the mobile games are like a like a, a gateway drug into our, our thing. Like your first game will be Pokemon uh, Go, but then you'll probably buy Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu or the Pokemon Sword and Shield. Mm. Like and and the, like. Oh, okay. You know, I I've learned about this character here. You know, uh, and then uh, I'll actually want the real deal. Like, Mar this is Mario Kart Tour will give you a taste of Mario Kart, and then I'll buy Mario Kart Eight Deluxe. And then you know this is has the actual uh, competitive ac- aspect. If you're into that, you know, great online play with Mario Kart Eight Deluxe. There needs to be more trash talk in Mario Kart. I mean, Nintendo is against any trash talk. Like, they, they're, that's like one of the, like the way you talk on a Nintendo uh, online game is like you plug it, it into your phone and you and then you, <laughs> you and then you gotta get that. The, the if Nintendo. you speak aggressively, you'll get banned. Like. <laughs> In the banned. Like, what the fuck? In Smash Brothers, they banned uh, taunts. You don't can't do taunts online. <laughs> yeah, so like you can't do taunts online. You can. Uh, can't, you have like. It's a, like my grandmother runs Nintendo. You have a pre. <laughs> don't say that to your brother. You have a pre-rendered uh, <laughs> thing you could say at the beginning, like "Let's go" or something like that, or anything like that, like "Let's fight." And then like. If you spam it, they're like, "Hey, that's no, me." So then, like, what what a game, what uh what uh Smash Brothers uh like online people do now is like, if you want to like diss someone, you do uh you do you do a tea bag, so you yeah. press down a lot. Do you get banned for that? No, you don't get banned because oh. it's like it's just like it's part okay, of the game. Okay, because we should do that like, Halo. Yeah. If you get killed, you know, like it's even worse than uh, a taunt because a taunt seems kind of cool. Yeah. This is just straight. This up, is a rape. Straight up, this, you this, know, this, raping this, your body. Well, this you don't. Is... You're usually not in tr- on top of them because usually you just knock. You them have off to knock them off. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Okay. I. But, but I mean, Bye. if you <laughs> want to be into that, I was not. I was like, oh man, this is real fucking real, dude. No, like, no, but that's what they. That's what uh, has evolved out of Nintendo's. Yeah, well, you know that's the thing. Is Nintendo can be, be like creative on how to make someone <laughs> feel terrible. <laughs> tell you what, and how to yeah. say fuck you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so we've been hyping up Death Stranding here for I don't know since we kind of started this mm-hmm. because um, the game came out last year. And it's on PS4, and we're kind of PC gamers. Even though I have a PlayStation 4 here, like I don't want—I don't have a pro. I have a regular. I got a pro, but I just got it. (laughs) I just got it. Okay, bro. It was so bullshit. (laughs) I was so mad. Nah, he walked in, threw the money down, walked out. Dude, guess what I got? All my friends are like, "You gotta get a PS4. You gotta get a PS4, dude. When are you getting a PS4? Hey, man, you got your PS4 yet?" And I finally got it, 
and I'm like, I got the 4K TV, I got the Pro, I'm going home, I'm feeling good. Next day, I text a picture to my friend, and I'm like, dude, check it out, I got it. And they're like, why? Why would you waste your money? <laughs> I'm with you. I'm with you. Like, I would love to get a 4K. Like, the the difference is No, but noticeable. they're like, dude, you know the five's coming out next year. Dude, you know the five's coming out next year. No, I did not know. But you okay. can easily, like, trade that in. I thought for I maybe had, like, a, like, a good, bucks. like, two years left, you know? No, nah, yeah. it's, yeah, it's, it's definitely coming. You just, before. if you, like, that's the thing. It, it's like, that's not, like, if you have a game that you like playing, that's something you could play forever, like. My first exposure to games was I was playing on the NES, it, and it was a hand-me-down NES. My cousins originally bought the NES. What games? What games? Uh, so, like, uh, games I was not good at. But my grandparents had an NES, and that was this is how I learned video games. This is my grand, my grandfather was like, try it out! And there was these old-ass fucking games, and I'm like, like, Boy and His Blob. Yeah. Or some weird, some of these weird mm. RPG games. Mega Man 3 was the one I would yeah. always play. At Such a weird and game, I could no. I could beat, like, weird. the Snake Man stage, and that was it, and there's, like, other, like, Eight more robots. You There's never have enough robots. lives to get through the whole thing. Yeah, so it's like, like hard like, games. Yeah. I miss hard games, man. Indie games are hard nowadays. Yeah. You ever tried the Shovel Knight series? No, that I've heard of great Shovel things. Shovel Knight though. is hard. I have Hollow Knight. Uh, they actually did a Mega Man Nine. That was hard. I I have it. I have not beat it. You know, so I I was in Mega Man until like Mega Man like X Four or something like mm. that, and then like. Well, so, like, they, on Super Nintendo was, like, X squared, and that was the one that just, like, it practically took my virginity, you know? Like, I was like, <laughs> Mega Man, you know? Um, like, I I had a notebook of all these codes written down. Your virginity down. was taken by a Mega Man? Uh, yeah. <laughs> 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 the, and, and, but as I, like, if you, like, I've been bored sometimes. I get on Wikipedia, and I click on Mega Man, I'm like, ah, oh, I miss that game. And you're, you click on the series, and you're like, holy shit, there's 14 of these games, you it's know? like four separate Mega Man series. And Mega then, like, Man. P- PS2, there's a Mega Man X9 or X10 or 12. I'm like, Jesus. Mega and Man. you're like, these graphics are going to be sick. And you're like, wait, this looks like the same the one same that was on this one. What the fuck? <laughs> they didn't hire any new graphics, guys. Yeah. Just, just do Tony. Do the same shit this year. Yeah. Oh, yeah, put that in the cartoon, too. It's the same. <laughs> <laughs> So anyway, I uh, I just wanted to show you guys the uh, there's a s- like a thirty second clip because Death Stranding is now gonna be they've now announced a hard date it's gonna be June. Shit, I was hoping it was gonna be March or something like that because I was like Death Stranding was gonna be one of these uh, uh, quarantine games. You know, I hear Death Stranding you got to do seventy hours before you really get to the. Oh, end so of that when game. you're stuck at home, you're like I gotta, like, oh, yeah. gotta play you Death know? Stranding. It's like yeah. yeah, I'm licking doorknobs and shit. Um. But <laughs> <laughs> anyway, this is a uh, just a just a quick little clip of what I don't hear anything for some reason. Um, but the graphics you see, the graphics are you know pretty decent, and they uh, I don't know why we can't hear this fucking thing. Is the audio up on that? No, thing? I don't hear it. You don't hear it. At all? We, I mean, oh, we didn't we didn't touch on. anything. But anyway, the fact of is, whenever a game okay, this is a big deal. I gotta pause. Oh this. shit, sunglasses. <laughs> <laughs> No, here's the thing. <laughs> photo <laughs> mode. His face. His face. <laughs> photo <laughs> mode, bro. His face. Pho- anyway, no. So here's the thing. High okay. frame rate. No, Ooh. this is the, okay. No, this is so nerdy. This is this is where the PS the the, the PC guys are really gonna gush. Is okay. Whenever you play games on play uh, on console, they always go to 60 frames. If that, if you got yeah, the yeah, hardware yeah. to do it. But now, if you do have the hardware. You can now go, and this is a G-Sync monitor, so you can now go up to 120 frames or something like that. Damn. But not only that, but then you got photo <laughs> mode. You know, you can make faces. <laughs> face. You know, He's you can. He's sticking his tongue out. Norman <laughs> Reedus but is now, sticking now, his now, tongue now, out. Anyone who's like, well, now I got to buy the fucking game. now. Okay, like I'm not buying the game for that, but it is whenever a, a, a game gets ported to the PC, there's always two scenarios. One, where they literally just try to create an executable in Windows and then they ship it, and it sucks. <laughs> or they actually send it to a team who goes through, optimizes it, opens up some of the settings and, and you know some of the configuration files. And what makes a really, really good PC port is when you do have things like 
uh, ultra wide support, which means that the the the, the camera rendering uh, isn't locked to a certain aspect ratio. You also have high frame rate, so it's not lit locked to thirty frames a second. Because some engines, I, I know I'm really going into the weeds now, That's but okay. for example. Um, uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's like the only <laughs> that face is so Hold good. Hold on, I don't know. That's uh, it's for oh yeah, those can't load you, now for some reason. Those of you that are listening, yeah, so those you listening. Pretty stupid oh yeah, face. I forgot we're doing an audio podcast too. I yeah, had to yeah. tell hey everybody, we're watching all this shit. Um, uh, but but when you see a, how a game is like coded for the computer, a lot of times, like when you wait as a PC gamer and you wait for a release. Most of the time, they suck. A good release is Red Dead Redemption 2. They open up a lot of the options. If you have the hardware that's beyond a PS4, you can do much better graphics than that, and that's cool. I was really, you know, I've, I've read some things. They said Death Stranding is going to come out. It's going to be a crappy release. But knowing that they're going to open up high frame rate support, ultra-wide support, and all these different other features and stuff like that, including even, like, a couple things, like a couple Easter eggs, like, you know, Half-Life 2 Easter eggs and stuff like that, which is kind of, I don't know, I was a big Half-Life guy, and that's kind of cool. But knowing that they're kind of putting this polish on it, I'm definitely going to be like a, a f like when that game comes out, as campy as a Hide Hideo Kojima as it is, as, as weird as it is, I'm, yeah. That's, my that's like a game. face. I have a friend that makes that same face in photos. So I think this, the, I think the, gra the like this, instance i think he's brushing his teeth or something like that like this game has a lot of weird instances where you have to like do actions and stuff like that so it, okay I, it's weird but i, I don't know i'm you a big to, Metal Gear i heard Solid you fan like yeah you have like to that. pee and stuff right yeah you have I to pee you have to pee water hey, and you know I, all about I, that Danny. yeah and i also heard that you sometimes you have to <laughs> masturbate or else your character gets too aggressive yeah uh, I mean, I, 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 if I don't, the then game. I definitely know I'm just going to kill random people. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's know? called Death Stranding. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, <laughs> you know, like, like I don't know. I'm hyped up. That's pretty much all that I had for that for Death Stranding. Oh, you're so, your yeah. sound's off of there. Looks good. Oh, is that it? Yeah, yeah. that's that's totally it. No, thanks for... Uh, Should we watch it again with sound? No, we're not going to watch it again with sound. <laughs> but we'll have some sound. Why did you turn off this sound, dude? I don't yeah. know why I muted this sound. Anyway, um... How uh, how familiar you are with uh, VR games? I watch a lot of VR related anime. So I respect that. Online. I respect that. Uh, when, but like like, have you tried out any of the Oculus Quest? Oh yeah, the I, Index. I, I tried them out. You know, at like uh, cons and stuff like that when when they're available. You know, and okay. See, yeah. have, what, what, like, so what's your what's your opinion on it? Do, are you are you like some people really don't like it? Some people are like oh, they're ready for this. I know? think it's just like it's like getting to the point where it feels like it's a game as opposed to it feels like an experience. That's the big thing. In, in like, um. I'm a, as you can tell, I'm a big Nintendo guy. Mm -hmm. The way that their motion controls worked is that there was yeah. a few games that like you had to have the motion control, and it felt like you, they were just making people did play it, baseball, bo bowling, and people were like, we got to buy the system so we can play baseball and bowling. But did it add to the exp – did doing this really make – it that much better. Like there was like a, like my my uncle like he had got fallen out of video games and he just loved playing the bowling like every day. He played it so much that his Wii broke. You know that's how much you know like <laughs> he made his Wii over <laughs> here. <laughs> he, I don't know how he broke. Broke it. my Wii. <laughs> Maybe he actually threw a literal bowling ball at it. But um, you know it's like it's like a different like you, you know, know the, that, that's, that's that that like was a, common for the Wiis. Yeah. I mean, people broke a lot of TVs with those things. <laughs> no, but like. Um, they they tell you to put the strap on. That's like the second thing they tell you. VR is like an opportunity to have like okay, well I can't I don't play traditional games, but hey, I put on the headset and then this is how they ex get you experience a the game. Then like another person that's just more into like uh, story based games, maybe that could be more of their their up their alley because it's more immersive or something like that. Because and I I have this sneaky sneaky suspicion, but it's kind of hard for me to kind of come up with a, a really cohesive opinion. That's I'd love to write something about it, but I. I've just gotten an Oculus Quest, and I, I got it because I wanted to get VR, but they're all so crazy expensive, and I don't have the room for it, but this was one where you can set up in a, a small little room. And some of the games, it like Super Hot and the Star Wars Darth Vader game, you know, I've never done any VR. Um, the, the weekend before, I went to a place up in uh, Burbank, and I did the Spider-Man game on the HTC Vive for 15 minutes. And I immediately was like, I'm going to buy one right now. I, <laughs> I, I, I was, you know, because some people, some people, their eyes don't really like they, it just doesn't work mm -hmm. for their brain doesn't work. But for me, 
Like I put it on and I was like, okay. And after a while, you forget about everything. Else. Yeah, that's all. There was just one I did thing I did. It was just like, uh, like one of those ones where you're just like doing like high score like, ones. Like Beat Saber. Or yeah, something Beat Saber. Like that. I did Beat Saber. That was fun. It's like it's just like high score. You're just doing it. Do you have any VR experience? Yeah, I well, Logan let me try one, <laughs> and I didn't really connect with any of the games at first. Mm-hmm. So I was like, yeah, this is kind of hokey. But then there was this game that he showed me called Drunken Bar Fight. And he was a natural. I started just beating the crap out of everyone mm. at the bar, and I was like, "Okay, I think I get this. I think I understand what this is. Why he this took is off so his good?" So. And he turned out he had beaten up the entire bar. <laughs> I life. did hit the wall by accident. <laughs> so, what what I what my I what I think my opinion about VR is is that I think that a lot of people are going about it all wrong about the immersive nature of it, and I think and the reason I'm I bring this up is I'm going to eventually segue into some. Uh, Half-Life Alex gameplay footage. Um, and this is the new... This is what they believe is going to be the killer app for VR. And when I, when I was playing like Red Dead Redemption, there was a, the, a level where you're walking around an old party at some uh, plantation and stuff like that. And you're not doing it. You're just walking around and people are talking to you and stuff and the story's mm-hmm. you know, taking place. And I remember just going... Um, you know, like... VR is so inf- uh, um, interested in like trying out different movements and 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 I understand because it's an early platform we're still kind of how can we utilize this platform? But one thing I notice is it doesn't have to always be slicing. Like when I was I got Skyrim uh, VR mm. and I played it for like five minutes and I slashed some guys and stabbed some guys and I was like this is fun but I want to sit down and I want to like relax now you know. So I I think the the people think. The movement is is all that matters, but they don't realize that there is this whole secondary, just immersive nature to where, like, if I was in the Red Dead Redemption game in a VR and you're walking around and people are just talking, hey, Arthur, and they're just talking to you and, you, you know, you're standing amongst people. Somebody actually in the game looking at you and walking over to you and talk was, was probably the most immersive nature about the entire experience. Mm. And um, Half Life Alex just came out with some new clips, and the game comes out March 28th. So it kind of is within our window of maybe this is the quarantine game. Um, <laughs> and so I kind of <laughs> wanted to just play. Just like there's only like three or four minute clips, but I just want you guys to just. Give me your thoughts on like, oh, what this, what this is gonna be, what the, because when people see clips, especially in the trailer, it's like, here's a gun, boom, here's an explosion, here's guys running in, pointing a gun at you, but you don't actually see, okay, how am I gonna actually play this game? Because yeah. you know, you've been to E3, you've, yeah. there's so many, com- like, like the, the advertisements, none of this is gameplay footage. This is all pre-renders. This is not like the game is gonna be. Damn. So when I real. see something, Too real dude, I want to <laughs> see. So just as a, as a heads up. This is, we're jumping right into Half-Life Alex VR footage. We got new gameplay footage that just came out today. And so, basically the game, you have these galaxy gloves. And this is how you interact with the world. Is you can reach out maybe 10 feet in front of you and pick something up. Um, and so, as you walk around, you can actually open doors and stuff like that. And so, for something like this, like see that see the teleportation tactic? Yeah, it looked like you peed yourself to another place. A yellow stream. Yeah, that, yeah, that was. <laughs> Just like I want to piss up a day. But the the weird thing is that when people have a gun in VR and they they hold it and they think it's it's you know like guns are harder to aim than you think and. Um, mm. Just so like the physics, like when I see this, I I played Half Life Two when I was uh, back in two thousand four when it came out, and just all of these elements in this game, like you're you know you're walking in this whole open area, you're not stationary, and you have to walk through this area, and you can just move these boards out. And so the crazy thing about Half-Life Alex is that because it's utilizing the HTC uh, or the, not the, HTC, the Valve Index, it has finger tracking. And so you're not controlling, you're not holding controllers as you're playing this. Your your fingers are basically the ones making the movements and it's all, it's just tracking it, you know, real time. Um, what I'm when I see this, what I'm very impressed with is is I was really worried that this game was going to be on rails where they put you in a room and then just stuff happens so you can't really move around. But this seems yeah. like you're actually walking around. You actually, pr- you know, m- you manipulate a screen and you can actually, it seems like you can upgrade your gun here. Yeah. That's and you pop your like. gun in. And that's, pr- I think that's pretty, like, 
I think it's pretty he cool. Just threw on I a mean, hat. it still feels oh, pretty I'm linear, right? He just threw on a hat. See you see that? He just pull, that was great. Yeah, it's the gravity. Like the gravity gloves are so strong, they pull I, off the But doors. see this right here. So this, this is this is a big part of the game, and this is like digging through stuff, moving around this. And this is from when I see some of the other clips. A lot of that, like you don't really realize digging through a drawer is gonna be something that's immersive. Yeah. But I think in this game, Ooh, like for yeah, example, he dumped that bucket, dumped that out, and there's gonna be like that's cool. that. Like something that Valve has really been into, especially since 2004, oh. is they've really oh. been. Fa uh, really interested with the Havoc engine, which allows all these little smaller granular uh, yeah, sort of things. And so, sure. well, to hack, so to do this, a lot of times you have to actually put your hand in and manipulate a computer with something um, to hack into a, you know, or sometimes you're, you have to be stationary, hack into something as you have a gun right. out on one arm defending Shooting yourself. Shooting off people? Yeah. That's cool. I, I, I think that's pretty cool. So, like, he took off the hat. Yeah, took off the hat. The f I think the, f <laughs> the physics, the physics element is is what really, really interests me. Like, so th one thing I notice is though is when you watch this, like when you're playing in the PC when like in 2004 Half Life 2, it was very easy. Boom, 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 boom. But this, this seems like I, I think he, I just saw that him he picked up something and had to throw it. Like he needed to. Uh, push the, the, the enemy back farther. Mm -hmm. So it's like that type of thing. It's like real combat. It's not just like you're shooting people. It's like, hey, you got to think about your spatial awareness. Yeah. And I'm joking about the hat, but it's like it looks like you can pick up anything. Oh, that's okay. that's pretty cool. But it, it, it's like he like picked up a canister from far away with the gravity gun or gloves and then threw it and made it explode. Let that me, was pretty cool. Let me pop over to this one. Actually, let me pop over to this one. No, wait, that's not it. So the gravity gloves are essentially like a uh, VR version of the the gravity gun from the second Half Life. Working on it. Right. Yeah, Half Life Two from 2004. Did I say Half Life One from 2004? No. Uh, yeah. You said two. But this is a way. Like, if you're gonna hack into a, a program. Oh yeah, that's cool. This is a this is a very unique system. This is you know this is like lock picking maybe in what Skyrim or something like that, but much more three dimensional yeah, angle. That just and looks cool. Yeah, ju that just looks like okay. That this is in the in the trailer. I imagine there are probably some that are insanely difficult. Yeah, that's gonna suck. And so, <gasps> like, cause it's Russell, so hard. Are you seeing this? Yeah, I'm wow. so hyped for this game. Oh, that's nice of him. And so they definitely are um, definitely interested with. Let me actually skip ahead a little bit here. Yeah, we're playing with some weird stuff. Um, there's a there's a third video which is actually the final. Um, sorry about this. Let me. There's a final. It's like small. Here we go. It's like two minutes. This is the combat I think that you might be interested in, Danny. That long one is an exploratory one. Look at this. Ooh. Okay. I mean, okay. I, I'm gonna do full. It's we're getting a little slow down a little bit from the audio, but yeah, we're getting a little lag. But with so you can teleport, which kind of does. Make it easier. Yeah, there is a little slow down on the video. From shelter to shelter. At least they don't show that on the sh on the yeah, video. Yeah, yeah, I don't know why that's. Oh, it's because the PlayStation got connected. But basically, like I'm, I'm, I look at these, like this battle arena area, and I imagine this scenario. Like, look at this. Like, this is, this is kind of smashing through boxes, opening up things. Oh shoot! <laughs> What's up? They, yeah. He opened a, a toilet yeah. up in the porter potty, and I don't know why there's a slowdown. Cool there. there's like a, it's like I don't know why the video is screwing up. I don't know either, dude. But Dang, 720? Yeah, I have to drum that. But anyway, if you have a shotgun now, I mean, like, like I imagine this, like, I don't know. When I s heard of Half-Life, Alex, I just assumed you're going to have corridors of guys here and there. I never really expected a giant full area. I mean, this is essentially a full Half-Life 2 as a full first-person shooter video game, but with the VR elements. Yeah. This is going to be something f so much more. And that, and so this is something that reminded me of... Yeah, this video is fucking up. Yeah, it's now. terrible. Sorry, guys. But one thing that, that game really... game looks great. The video is yeah. terrible. 
one thing that blew me away about Super Hot, and Super Hot is the game where you shoot and it, the time only moves when you're moving. So if you if you stay perfectly still, it's frozen. But and as you move the bullets, you can actually see the bullet trails and stuff. And there like are so the, many times, like bullet time, bullet time, yeah. yeah. Oh, if you're into that kind of yeah. stuff, like you could actually throw stuff in Max slow Payne. motion. Max Payne, I would say. Yeah, very similar to Max Payne. And so what th- that game called Super Hot is was one of my favorite. Like I was out in, in my living room until like one in the morning. My girlfriend was like yelling at me because like, we we're still on that stupid thing. And I'm like, yeah, it's it was. <laughs> it's because you can eventually like like th- this idea of there's this barrier in front of you and you actually crouch down and hold your gun over and pop 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 and kill somebody that way that you can do that in VR and that's so cool that you can hide behind something and just hold your gun out this way and then shoot someone around a corner that is there that's a feeling that it, you know it, like the shooters I, like describe, shooters have kind of like they kind of st- stagnated to some degree uh, yeah. uh, over the time and like VR is a great way to not only challenge the genre but like sort of introduce new elements you know like how is how are you surviving it's not just about like uh, the traditional fighting against your own multiplayer but like mm-hmm. you're like, in a horde of enemies and you have to do various things you have to dig through a porta body <laughs> well there's a thing that <laughs> you know, that's part of the experience like you're digging and like you know, you're trying to find stuff. Like it's kind of like a. But that idea of pouring out the pot and digging through mm-hmm. something in a panic. I, I like uh, like um uh, I love the Last of Us on, on the PS4. Yeah. It's like that, except you're actually including the VR element. So it's like you know that part where it's like somebody's coming after you and you can't find out what you have. That's actually what you do, but you're literally going through stuff. It's a whole like mm-hmm. I, that whole grabbing thing. It's like it's it's a, it can be a big deal because it's like. It's it is it's a desperate desperation is what you need in a game like yeah. you need a Panic. life or death with know? without the gravity gloves element you have to walk over and grab things and that could get exhausting to so where almost the gravity gloves are just an element to for accessibility in the game it all you know there might be cool if like there's one level like you know the char- lead character loses the ability to use their gravity gloves and you're like you've been using you're cheating the entire time this one level you ha- you can't do it. Um, uh, I, I worked on um, Final Fantasy 15 as a QA tester. Yeah. And so um, there's one level, like towards the end of the game, where uh, Noctis lead character loses all his like abilities, so he has to like fend through this like uh, tower. That's, that's the worst. When you spend like The Witcher did this, like I spend all my time getting all but these it, knives and stuff, and then I finally have the boss battle, and they take everything it's away. It's a narrative aspect because like that's what they yeah. did to Iron Man three. You know, the hero yeah, has to lose all of their to. items. To find out because it's oh, not the not it's not the suit that makes him Iron Man, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, the, like that type of thing. If I have that in the game, I would be like, damn, I want to play that level. Like yeah. after you had been playing, and it would, like you know the tricks of the trade, like hey, fuck you. De- well, I that's <laughs> a, that's something I think VR is going to be really interesting is because we're just starting to scratch the surface on multiplayer. A lot of multiplayer games will come down to people exploiting the just the elements of how the game operates mm. at the very basic level and in VR being much more it's v- I, there are definitely going to be people who are going to like really exploit some things by you know manipulating you know their controllers in a way or so but but you know, it, the world's just changing the platform's changing and and I'm just curious of how different sort of experiences are going to change when you know like right now uh, the Oculus Quest just incorporated finger tracking. So you don't need gloves. You hold your hands out and you can actually see and you can double click with this and stuff. It's very early, very beta. It was a little rough sometimes, but I'm like, oh, give it a couple of years. Like, what is it, what is the VR model plus death stranding? Like, you're doing your, uh, brushing your teeth. Yeah. You know, that's like eventually where we're you're going. You're not thinking big enough. I'm yeah. thinking hentai games, you know? Oh, my God. I, yeah, I know. We <laughs> have to. I, you not have to, <laughs> Danny. <laughs> You have to. <laughs> no, not not really. No, no I mean you, you don't have to, but if you want to, and you have the money, and yeah, and you're cool with it, and your family's cool with it, and you know God's cool. with You were much less enthusiastic about that, and I am. I'm very impressed at that, What's that? I, about hentai. No, I'm, I'm 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 hoping that you uh, shouldn't be enthusiastic. No, I am very enthusiastic. I'm just holding Damn. it all in. Okay, that's I'm good. holding it. All <laughs> in. I know about. You know, I played uh, certain ones. Go on. Pony pop. <laughs> <laughs> you know what that is, Danny? No, no, but it sounds. He does. Exciting. He knows exactly what that is. He's a, he plays that too. Yeah, it's uh. N- anyways, let's uh. <laughs> <sighs> I 
God, there's so many editing to this podcast. No, you can, um, you know, you, it's, 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 it's a game. So, uh, I'm, uh, like, to be honest, what's what being a Better QA tester B12? for uh, Final Fantasy 15? Yeah, that was at Square Enix That's in correct. El Segundo. Yes. Uh, so just what was that like? Because I'm I've never been in a QA test. I'm just curious of what I was like in between jobs and like um, I just wanted like you know it's something new. So mm-hmm. like uh, I tried it, you know, and um, because of the way the game had developed, it took a little bit longer for them to do it. So I got to work on just this one game. That was the only game I worked at Square Enix. There's, there's like short term contracts in terms of like you know yeah. three months or something. Con- it went yeah, up going con- like contracts. started in like May or something like that, and ended up going to like October or November or something like that. And it was like, you know, you play the game inside and out, and you, you, you learn to treat – like, one of the things we were doing is, like, we're trying to be the – we're just trying to do it. Like, basically, you're just trying to exploit the game. And you're just trying to, to break the game. Yeah, yeah. I was so just, that's what I was curious on was, like, how One of the things day-to-day. is uh, I was trying to be – I was like, if I am the fastest player in this room, I am the fastest player to play this game. Right now, I am a <laughs> speed runner. This is how my speed running career begins. So we had like a like you know, uh, we didn't do an actual speed runner thing where it's like about button inputs and when the first button. But like we'd like to do a general estimate when the game says, and uh, so you do the whole you know and like you know at a certain point I think in my office I was the fastest speed runner. Now the people in Japan that are QA testing they probably beat me. Well, high but score. A I, high score is the high score. Yeah. So you know? I you know in theory could have been you know. Uh, 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 among the greatest Final Fantasy 15 players of all time, the um, fastest that you've, you know. No, but anyways, it, it was a, not. It doesn't <laughs> hold up now. But I, you were the first. You were like Bill Russell mm. in the NBA in the 70s. And most people are like, who the fuck is that guy? But they're like, yo, he was the first. Yeah, uh, I had never I any desire to get in the you know, video game. The I thought video that was game a made industry. up person. That's a real no, person. That, yeah, he has like 10 NBA final oh, rings. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah he no. doesn't watch. <laughs> it's cool. What? No, it's What's his cool. name? No. Oh, yeah. you, oh, you guys talking about Russ? No, he's Russell. No, he's. <laughs> you guys talking about old Russ? <laughs> um, I had never intended to get in the video game industry. I had played like a bunch of Final Fantasies. I had finished, you know, four, six, a really random number. Four, six, ten is the ones I finished. That's you know the, the median. The median for people finishing Final Fantasy games is zero. <laughs> so <laughs> I just, like, the, I'm, I'm like, I can attest to that. Never finished. Like Final when Fantasy it was like four game. and six, I was uh, like, God damn, not many so people know the that. The first four Final and six. Fantasy, you, I first played the NES, and every time it comes out for another console, you I play. seem to buy it. You know, they had like a Final Fantasy on the Game Boy Advance, and then it was on the DS, and then it's been on my phone. You know, I I bought it each time. I, the phone is the farthest I've ever gotten on it. Yeah. But uh, I haven't finished the original Final Fantasy yet. But uh, but it's it a good experience because like you see the other side of it, you know. And um, one of the funniest parts is that uh, uh, my uh, my supervisor uh, Conan did the co- the uh, Conan plays video games. What do you call it? Conan. Clueless yeah. gamer. Clueless gamer. Right? Yeah. And uh, so he plays it, and like Conan gets really frustrated <laughs> about the game, and uh, they get stuff going at the end where he's like. He didn't realize he's like he's talking mad. He's talking about the game like not great, and then like he uh, he 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 talks about how um, actually all the developers that have been working on the game for the last like six or you know a few years, they are all um outside. This this tension is better than any of the tension that's in the game, <laughs> and like for a frame. You can see my supervisor, like, he opens the door and, like, he says, oh, but good job, guys. And you see my supervisor, like, with the biggest grin. <laughs> and it's, like, for a lot of us, you know, it was, like, it's just, like, it's, it's like a, it's a camaraderie thing, too. It was, like, a, because, like, when we were on a team together, we uh, built up a rapport. We, we yeah. occasionally hung out since. Even then, we just sort of, like, occasionally check in. And it was, like, you know, it's a good experience. I, I, I don't think I'd ever get back in the game industry at the, this point in my uh, life, but it was, like, Hey, I said I can say I worked on a Final Fantasy game. That's it's fucking nice. cool, dude. You know, my I remember when I beat it. You know, I took a picture of it and I was like, I posted it on Instagram. I was like, Hey, there's my name. You broke you know? the NDA? No, I'm just kidding. That's no, no, yeah, after after the game. After this game, yeah, yeah. So, um, but uh, I, I, I mean, it wait, was a great so experience. was your name in the credits? Of mm-hmm. the team? Dude, dude, that's so cool. Yeah, I, I'll send it to you guys later. That's so. Because yeah. I actually have 15. Oh, yeah. I just haven't had the time to. 
go into it yet. Uh, well, now you have a reason to beat it. Now. You have, oh, fuck yeah. And then like, you're like, what? It's a game? I don't want to beat that. Oh, Jay's name's at the end? If you like the photo. After 150 hours, like, Jay, you fucking ass. You didn't tell me how long that game was. It's actually one of the shorter Final Fantasies. Oh, yeah. Yeah, only 150 hours. Yeah, I know. You could beat it, like, in 20 at least. Really? Yeah, you could. Yeah, if you're a speedrunner like this guy. No, see, that was him just saying, you're not going to be able to beat my fucking record. No, no, because, like, actual, like, some of the Final Fantasy games, like, I don't know how they do it, but they beat, like, Final Fantasy 10 like, seven hours. Seven hours. I don't know how those Cheers. fucking guys yeah. do that. But anyways, um, there's a photo mode in it, and so you take photos in battle and stuff like that, and then you get to pick one photo at the end. It's like that summarizes your journey. Really? Yeah, and then so, like, there's, like, in the, whenever I would play the game, there's a certain moment where you can get a guest character for a little bit, and then you can – she gets to be in your photos if you take it photos at certain places. So I would – every time I beat the game, I'd get this character. Her name is Ar- Arnea, also a uh, white-haired – Anti-hero. I think I have a. I think you have a type. Yeah, yeah, you have a type. Huh? Um, but you know, she, there's this part. You should watch where you Powder. That movie. You love that movie. <laughs> Blow your mind. That movie. It's about a guy who's albino who has superpowers. Uh, yeah. Anyways, um, white hair. <laughs> well, if he had hair, well, he probably has white hair down there. But uh, that's one of the aspects of immersiveness. Like, oh, this is the one, this, and you pick like, you have to pick up through all your photos. This is the one that summarizes my journey. You know, and you take it, and you know, it's a nice capstone to your. The Final Fantasy, you know, because when are they going to release the next yeah, one? Yeah, when it, okay, like, when is going to be the last one? Like, when is, what is going to be the final? It just takes too know? long to develop games now. No, it's like they've made 15. It's like, you would assume you were like, all right, this is actually the final. Okay, band. well, Horobu, Hor, Hor, I can't say his name, but, like, the, the original creator mm. said that, you know, he just wanted to have a grandiose feel with the title. So, oh, he just uh, called it final. Yeah, and he also, he also thought I was, was cracking a joke, and, and Jay was like, "Well, I read here on no, this book no. that he actually meant it." I, I'm you like, know, oh, I, I, I just love giving out random facts. <laughs> about Good. Now you're getting a taste yeah, of what it see. feels <laughs> like. You're getting a taste <laughs> of what it feels hey, like. Hey, Jay, what? How do you say California roll in Japanese? <laughs> um, <laughs> say go. You say get a get out, get out of my country. <laughs> that's what they tell you. <laughs> um. No, that's uh, uh, that's awesome, man. Um, <laughs> Get out of my country. Oh, where can I find that? <laughs> is that a cool is that a game? That sounds that sounds cool. <laughs> oh man. So, um, what are we at right now? Uh, we're at a hour and eight. A hundred? You're about to say we're like at a hundred? What the fuck? Um, because I was like, well, how do you get over a hundred minutes All in right. an hour? Um, well. Is there any other like Nintendo game that you want to go over that yeah. we can just like clap and? No, we it? could do another segment and stuff like that. Yeah, or yeah. If you're is there done. another like? Is there well, what are, like a uh, game that you're itching to get into? Mm, to talk I mean, about? I, I I think like I like talking about current gen. I'm like, yeah. um, let's see here. Oh, Super Smash Bros. That's part of my uh my hot take. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, hold on. So, you like Smash Brothers? Tell yeah. me about that. Smash. <laughs> okay, in my opinion. Smash Brothers has become the premier fighting game series in all of gaming. Whoa, that is a- ooh, okay. Well, think about it. Uh, that's controversial. So it, it used to be Street Fighter, right? And Street Fighter Five, uh, like totally shit. I don't. I mean, I don't. It's a great game, but it's made ju- like it's like the tr- the fighting game genre has been put uh, funneling down to only the hardcore gamers. You know, when I remember when Street Fighter Four came out, I was so excited because mm-hmm. it was like you know. Um, it had that uh, mainstream appeal and everything like that, and it was back to, um, and like everyone got in. It was on every ga- every console for some reason, but nowadays the fighting games a lot of times what they're doing it's be- it's becoming a smaller audience. And like gaming is about enjoying it with other people, especially fighting games. Yeah. And Smash Brothers is a series where you can um, you get to pick how you play. You can pick with items. You can play with four people. You can play with eight people. You can play with two people. You can play stock. You can play stamina. You can play time. You know, you could yeah. There's a variety of ways to do it, and then the way that the competitive scene it both has that party element, that f- multiplayer, let's fight with each other element, and then it also has this incredible competitive scene. Not just in the current game, you also had it in the four series as well as currently still melee. People still play melee. In the that's game, true. So yeah. That that's uh. I want to be devil's advocate though. Okay, sure. Okay, so it. what about Mortal Kombat? The Mortal Kombat 10 just came out, right? Mm-hmm. That was. I have it. It's but good. But so like. Do you, so like, why do you? I mean, because like, I'm not a big, I'm not big in the fighting genre, so I'm not in the know, so I mm-hmm. wouldn't be the one like, oh, I. But I'm just curious, like, like as someone who's not really in that, I'm, I, I'm aware of the social, uh, Super Smash Brothers and Melee and all those, um, and I played them a little bit, but I wasn't really into them. However, I will concede that 
I don't really ever see bars saying Mortal Kombat tournament. It's always Smash Brothers. It's always tournament. Smash, yeah. Always Smash. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But like, do you? Def- I mean, um, well. Like, originally, like, there was an argument whether it was even a fighting game. Like, they didn't want to necessarily consider that. But now, we're, we're into the... Smash Brothers being yeah, a fighting game? Yeah, So now we're in the fifth, or t- the creator considered the sixth game in the series. Mm-hmm. Um, and it, it's a fighting game. It, people people play it competitively, and then people play it against their friends at home. The main thing about it is I think it it's expanding the audience. And I think, like, great games... I know certain, there's certain, like, artistic games that, you know, like Ico or... Uh, Shadow of the Colossus or yeah. like that, you know, it's a, it's an artistic game and only a certain crowd Very will get niche. it. Yeah. But like, when a game can reach critical mass and everyone's enjoying it, it's a different level. Like, gaming is about uh, when a game the comes out niche and actually becomes bigger to where it's almost mainstreamly. So accepted. This is another That's nutty a fact. Nintendo game. So yeah, <laughs> Smash Brothers originally wasn't set to come out in America. They didn't think it was gonna. They this it was uh the the game it's the first game was very low budget. They just sort of like okay. Uh, I have this fighting game system, but it's kind of like boring just to have random characters do it. So they're like, okay, we'll just throw in some of the N- Nintendo characters and then see what happens. And then they were successful. And they're like, okay, uh, we need a launch title. Uh, can you do another one in like two years? And like that's kind of a short cycle. Yeah. So the guy rushed out and made this incredible game. And then the uh, hardcore gamers found a way to make it harder. You know, like they found different ways in order to make it into a more intense fighting game. And then. They eventually kept on honing out the formula, and I think uh, S- Smash Brothers right now, Smash Brothers Ultimate, has that right element of like, hey, anyone can play it, but if you really know what you're doing, like if you play online, I'm not even that good. I'm not like on Elite Smash is the highest level online. Mm-hmm. I'm not that at a level no- nowhere close. But you know, if you can like zero to death someone, like you go from zero percent to knocking them off the stage, it's like a beautiful. It's like watching art. You yeah. know. Oh yeah, and without and letting the other person do anything. Yeah, they don't. Yeah, they will, you'll try to do something, and it's like just you know. Oh, I've had that. I've had that happen to me because my I have a couple friends that are like super into mm. melee, and they're like trying to be like, oh, you should play, you should play, and they're like trying to teach me like wave dashing and other yeah, techniques yeah. or whatever. And uh, literally, the game is unplayable for me. Like I, I can't. It's like it's like your older brother they're just all, holding on, your head. They're yeah. on the items. Swinging. They're on the items. And then I just. No, because they like to play like how it is in tournaments and stuff. Yeah. There's no items and it's one v one. I always hated that I when cry. I'm like fighting, I like I'll keep so fighting much. and then like someone will be like, like I'll have like 500 percent or something like that, and someone will like touch me and I'll just fucking spontaneously combust and disappear. <laughs> no, you know what, what the piss- fuck happened to that? You know what, what pisses me off? The opposite. Somebody's at like 500 percent and I can't. I hit them and they don't go flying. Yeah. They're just like, I'm like, you're at 500 percent. So it, it, it also the other thing about the I know like Smash Brothers does DLC right like the the game the all the DLCs develop after the game's done and like all these other fighting games they just love the like it's like the, they put they the put pre-order it, it's stuff on them. the on the disc and they're just making you pay for it mm-hmm. like you can see the developers going through the struggle and it's like yeah. that's the way it should be and then not only that um because it's become such a big series it's become representative of the entire gaming industry they have um. Characters like that aren't even on Nintendo consoles. Like mm-hmm. uh, they have uh, Joker from the Persona series on mm. there now. Um, Cloud last generation. Like Final Fantasy VII was never on a Nintendo console. They put it on. There. Yeah, it's kind of weird that they're just well, putting I mean, random people oh, on yes, now. Yeah. And stuff. Yeah, but, but, but I mean, Kingdom Hearts. And then like, well, oh, that's only PlayStation. Yeah, yeah but um, Banjo is on it, and Banjo is a Microsoft character. Wait, really? Yeah, Banjo is wow, on the. Wow, that's because it's like it's just like about gaming. It's like. Yeah. It's a Nexus. Wait, no, of but gaming. Banjo was on the Nintendo. 64. It was on the Nintendo. Rare was so the one can, the owner. You know. No, the Rare was the owner, and then Rare got bought out by Microsoft when they were originally a second party Nintendo, and then Microsoft bought them out. Yeah, and it says they bought all the Rare. Properties. Yeah, when they he made the new, they, they history, made the new, uh, the new Conquer game for for Conquer's Bad Fur Day. You ever played that, that game? That game was amazing. <laughs> so, <laughs> but they made the live and reloaded for uh, Xbox 360. Yeah, because it was all, all the Rare or games Xbox, now are Xbox. all. Oh, I actually all, I didn't uh, play the. the, the was it just remaster or was it just like a no, sequel? No, it was a sequel. It was like its own thing. A full sequel. Yeah. Anyway. Wow, so, dude. um, shows. What's uh, what's coming up with you? Like, what you got? Anything uh, you want to uh, drop? Yeah. So, um, this is gonna come out on March eighth. Okay. Uh, <laughs> this is a full bit ways off. Uh, the next show I have is uh, I'll be performing at the Tao Comedy Studio on May second at eight p.m. 
it's a nice little spot in LA. It's a good, good, uh, good spot, you know. So I would check it out. Um, I also am planning to release stuff on my YouTube channel. Um, and so right now my YouTube channel just has all my edition stuff. What's your YouTube channel, man? Uh, just Jay Aquino Comedy. Just Google oh, okay, that. Google right. that in the little. Uh, I'll put that in the description. Yeah, yeah. So people can find. Yeah. You. Um, oh yeah. So I'm planning to do. I have. I don't want to. It, it's gonna be something where I use my stand-up material and I uh, put it into a almost comic book format. Oh, that's cool. So I've been working and experimenting on it, and I'm hoping I can release one uh, by the, uh, next week. Um, so, like, are we talking like animated graphic novels, kind of? Oh, like, are we, like yeah, animated graphic novel type of thing. Like, um, that just remind like when I was a, uh, one of my big biggest fan, uh, biggest games that I was a fan of was Max Payne, mm -hmm. and I loved just that graphic novel element, the way that the right. story told. But it, it was like animated, but so we're slowly fading. There, like, uh, like there's this game called River City Girls on. Uh, I think it's on. Um, <laughs> It's on all the consoles. <laughs> it's a, it's a, it's, a, it's a offshoot of the River City Ransom series, which is oh, I love game. that series. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So um, basically, you know, usually in in, in uh, beat 'em up games, your boy, your girlfriend gets stolen. So this one, the boyfriends get stolen. Wait, so it's a beat 'em up game mm -hmm. called River City Girls. Yeah, and so they, there's amazing manga esque, uh, manga esque uh, cutscenes that I got really inspired by. Like, oh, you know, this is like a way to translate your comedy, and like. Comedy is about bigger ideas. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's about an idea that's bigger than uh, what you're saying with your hands or with your thing. So if you could articulate with a, a, a comma panel. Oh, yeah. There's so many things on stage that I, I'm limited to only my vocabulary, and I'm like, this would be better as a short film. The <laughs> only thing I have to say, I'm not a great artist. Like, uh, like we have a friend, Jason Nice, wonderful yeah. artist, like amazing artist. I'm not that like I'm not a professional artist, but uh, I can I can draw a little bit, you know. And even if I don't only draw a little bit, it looks like peanuts characters. Well, as long as you as long as it's like legible and it's not like are these all penises or mm -hmm. is, oh these are all yeah, characters. Yeah, so I think uh, and um, even if they were all penises, I'm sure there's you know some, I actually a market like, yo, out let's there. check this shit yeah. out. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I'm I'm trying to I want to I've been really meaning to do it. And I've been busy with actual work as opposed yeah. to you know all this other stuff. So I've been meaning to do it, and since now this is now breezed into life because it's on some other platform besides my own platforms i i feel like i'm really going to commit to doing oh yeah. uh, releasing yeah. something cool hell hopefully. yeah dude yeah so uh yeah that's the, that's the main things i have going on you can always you know just check out what i'm doing on on the socials or whatever and i try to you know, just do a bunch of stuff danny you got anything uh so march 12th well tomorrow i'm going to be hosting flights but that's not going to be a on here, I just realized. Yeah. Last, hey so, man, that was a great job hosting Flies last week. Yeah. Well, oh, thank you. <laughs> 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 Actually, uh, amazing. <laughs> um, let's see. March twelfth, I'm going to be performing at uh, Atomic Basement Comics with oh, uh, Andrew Mercado. We had him here, and uh, he and uh, Brianna Kelly run that show in Long Beach, which is great. Uh, and then uh, Station Wagon again on March twentieth. So. March 20th, we're going to be back at the uh, 1172 Art Lounge in Echo Park. So be sure to catch us there as well. It's a great time, free show, amazing comics. I mean, that sounds great. I, I might have to go. Yeah, you should go. You should okay. go. I'll be sure. I, I've been meaning to go ever since December, but like every Friday that it happens, it's like oh, something else has happened. It's because Fridays, a lot of stuff happens on Friday. Yeah, Fridays are just a shitty day. But <laughs> I'll try to make it to that next one, man, for sure. Um, you got anything going on? Yeah. Unfortunately, on? March, I am lazy as shit this month. Yeah, you. Uh, uh, you I got, got the Witcher three DLCs. I got to finish. You know. You got your Corona <laughs> stay in vibes. <laughs> yeah. No, like really, like, I, like, I, like, I don't know, man. I was saw on the news some guy on CNN. He was like a doctor of some bullshit, and he was like, "This is gonna be horrible. We're gonna have to. We're not gonna be able to leave our homes." And as an introvert, I was like, "Fuck yeah, dude. That sounds <laughs> awesome." So I'm hyping it up. No, actually, <laughs> I was. I know it's uh, sort of like on a cool down part of the show, but like. Have you guys thought about like what's gonna happen if like there's more of a health panic and you can't perform as much anymore? You know, I actually, to be honest, I was expecting comedy to really kind of be impacted by it. I, I, I really do. I think that it, some things might be like I, to be honest. I don't know how the comedy clubs, the big clubs, are gonna handle it, but I, th I can, I can totally see just much less mics, some rooms being canceled and stuff. Like, if there's severe disruption, if schools get canceled and stuff like that, and it gets really bad. Could be. You have any thoughts, Danny? Ah, uh, let's all get sick and die. Yeah, dude. What? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, it, dude. that's it for us, man. Uh, this week on Double XP. Thanks a lot, Jay, for joining yeah, us. This was you, awesome. Jay. We'll have you on here s as soon as we can mm -hmm. go through the cycle of all of our other friends. Mm -hmm. Um, but 
the short one. Yeah, until, <laughs> until we'll have you on next week, Jay. Uh, anyway, anyway, guys, thanks for joining us. Take care, and we are out.